Thanks, Charlotte. Maybe I'll just do a quick introduction of myself and Dr. Lin, then before we can do a bit more discussion into our main topic. So I'm a partner with Profit, um, which is a consulting company, and I'll, I'll introduce a little bit on Profit after our, our introduction. Um, as you can hear from my accent, I'm Singaporean, right? So um, actually know Dr. Lin for quite a number of years, so we happen to be in this interesting innovation kind of like a sector that we both have a passion for, but at the same time, you know, um, it's in, as part of my work, um, and then coming back to Singapore after about spending about a couple of years in Hong Kong, um, one of the things I'm actually trying to do is to help Profit uh, drive a new digital innovation hub out of the Singapore and then growing that as a practice. So we're in the process of enlarging this hub. And then I think it's, it's really timely to talk to Dr. Lim or Jui as I call him privately. Yes, please call me Jui. Yeah. So over to you, Jay. Uh, yeah, no, uh, thanks Jacqueline for having me. This is a, a, a privilege and honor. Um, and, um, I, you know, Jacqueline and I have known each other for quite a few decades. We, we, we were in secondary school together. Mm. So, you know, through uh, fortuitous circumstance, uh, you know, innovation has brought us together. So I'm very happy to, uh, to be doing this. Um, Jack, how would you like me to do, to, would you like me to just jump right in, uh, or do you want to also... Let me do a quick intro of yeah. Profit, and then we can yeah. go a little, to understand a bit more about SG Innovate. So just I'll just do a quick um, overview of Profit. So I think um, one of the things that got us together for the session today is really because I think, especially post-COVID, right, I think we see an interesting transformation that's ongoing. So for, for the last 25 years, that's what Profit has been doing. So what we do is we help a lot of companies transform their brand, their businesses, their marketing strategy, their innovation or customer experience um, in line with the changing marketing and business landscape. So I think as part of the, the next slide, yeah. So what we do quite a fair bit of as a consulting for me, we almost sit in the middle of, I would say the brand design agencies on, on one spectrum and the consulting company, the McKinsey and VCG, the like, we kind of sit somewhere in the middle and we kind of marry both the left and right brain at the same time. So a lot of things we tend to do in terms of helping company grow better or transform better is through many various lenses, right? In particular, I think customer centricity is one lens, right? So it is not about just the company's capabilities alone. It is doing things where customer wants you to actually uh, go to, right? It, it could be anything from the innovation that we see today in terms of the mobility app or the ED that we see today or new innovation in, in healthcare. And obviously it is all about taking that bold innovation step to do something more transformative and a little bit in terms of just having that little bit of incremental change, it is helping company grow faster and better, right? And in many ways, I think because of pandemic, you'll see that this is going to be a huge area. I mean, in, in Asia and Southeast Asia in particular, uh, the transformation of um, using digital and innovation to help companies and customers grow better is going to be key. So new offers and new ways of actually growing the business is going to be key. Um, so I won't talk, touch on too much about profit. You can go to our website to understand more about us. But um, what we do quite a fair bit of is um, helping companies grow. So we'll just give you a couple of quick examples, right? So in the area of, of the, the we, we do form areas of work, right? So in many ways, experience and innovation very much like what SJ Innovate to do today is that we help companies unlock new experiences and innovation, especially as market transform, whether it is through the product innovation, um, like we did with some companies I'll, I'll, I'll touch on a little bit more, or also looking at how to use data analytics to improve the marketing and sales, or looking at just the pure brand play to make sure the brand proposition is actually activated in the right areas, um, and then understanding the segmentation of customers, or understanding how uh, companies can grow better through, I would say, a transformative lens in terms of their DNA, in, in terms of the culture. So a lot of this uh, has interplay in terms of how company unlock growth in many areas, right, internal or externally, whether using innovation or marketing as a lens. So in the next page, just very quickly to touch on some, some interesting ways of how innovation has, we work with some innovation spaces with clients. So for example, we all know about Disney Plus today, right? Everybody, you know, I'm a subscriber at Disney Plus. So before the birth of Disney Plus, we actually worked with Fox Plus or part of the Fox network to start to move towards the innovation play, right? Customers are no longer 
uh, doing the tally and, and watching television, everybody's moving towards the, I would say, cutting the cord, almost uh, the kind of the new space of Netflix invented. So we actually worked with Fox Plus to invent the new platform that you see in Disney today after being acquired by Disney. Um, for AXA, for those who understand AXA, we have helped them think about um, using AI and innovation in the next insure tech space, right? So we invented a new, I would say, a humanized brand called Emma. She's almost like a, a, a humanized um, AI that helps um, both the agencies and customers think about how they can manage their, I would say, their life journey in terms of insurance and protection. So it is thinking of um, how innovation can actually play an in instrumental part in organizing customers' lives. I think in Singapore, closer to home in Singapore, um, SP Group is one that we worked with um, very recently. When the market uh, become no longer a monopoly, it was very important for them to think about the innovation space that they can offer as a value add, right? So one of the things that we have um, kind of like uh, work with them was to think about new ways to help their customers manage um, the sustainability factor, which was a huge demand that we saw from research, right? So we came up uh, with a product with them called a green tech, uh, green energy tech. And in many ways, what that does is that it has a dashboard and using AI to be able to help company manage the energy um, uh, prop, uh, kind of energy savings and sustainability of values a little bit better. So that's just a little bit about profit, right? Um, and that's some of the space we do in innovation. And I guess um, in many ways, I think SG Innovate helps company unlock a lot of growth through some of the new tech. And maybe Jay, Jay can tell us a little bit more about SG Innovate. Sure, happy to do so. Um, so a quick introduction. SG Innovate is actually a, uh, a company. We're, we're formed as a private limited company, but we're wholly owned by the uh, Singapore government. And our mandate is to develop the uh, deep tech economy in Singapore. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's easier said than done, but the approach that we've taken is, you know, we focus on the entrepreneurial scientist um, who wants to build a deep tech startup. And when we say, you know, when we, you know, we keep saying deep tech, but what, 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 what do we mean by deep tech, right? So our working definition is um, you know deep tech uh, must uh, you know requires a, a high degree of specialization at the point of invention and at the point of application. So if we just use um, quantum technologies or AI, for example, the people who came up with these uh, algorithms uh, required a high degree of specialization. And actually, it wasn't just specialization in one area. Uh, clearly, if you want to be in AI or you know natural language processing, you need to have some understanding of linguistics. You need to have some understanding of uh, psychology. Um, so you know it's a specialization that's uh, trans transboundary, right? Uh, so that's at the point of uh, invention. But equally, the, the the people who use it today, uh, uh, you know, are, are not um, you know. It, all requires a bit of training. So if, again, if we just use, uh, you know, mRNA vaccines, for instance, uh, require a high degree of specialization at invention, but also at application, right? The guys who actually make it need to, be, need to know how to handle this new class of molecules called mRNA. So, uh, you know, it, another way to phrase it would be uh, technologies that are uh, coming out of research, uh, recent research, and of course, recent is time and context sensitive. Yeah, in software, uh, recent could be a couple of years. Uh, in biotech, for instance, it could take a, it could take a bit longer. Ten years could still be considered recent. Uh, mm. The mRNA vaccines that we're using today took decades to develop. Mm. Right, so that's what we do, and uh, we do it, and and we uh, you know uh, use a triple helix approach to, to this mission of helping these scientists. And that triple helix comprises the following components. There is a talent component. So we, uh, we do two things in talent. On the one hand, we train in certain areas. We don't want to duplicate ourselves. Uh, you know, we don't want to duplicate efforts uh, of, of others. Uh, but the other thing also we do is we help them find positions in deep tech companies. 
through a database, which in turn is given life by our second division, which is community and brand, right? Mm -hmm. Community building on this slide. So um, I don't know if how many of you are on our mailing list, but you will see that we run events at uh, sort of uh, you know breathtaking frequency. We do about three a week, um, and and we're doing this virtually now. Uh, in the good old days, of course, these events were held at our at our facility on Thirty Two Carpenter Street, a very central location. Uh, but the idea is to to bring people together to share information, share best practice. Uh, but also to acquire data, right? We want on an opt-in basis, the people who join our events can say, look, I'm interested in employment opportunities in the deep tech space. And for those who opt in, uh, they get curated into the so-called talent database. And when our portfolio companies have a particular requirement, we can search that database. Uh, one of the recent developments we've, we've, uh, we've, we've uh, taken on uh, is to now expand our clientele beyond our portfolio companies. So increasingly, we are seeing, uh, you know, EDB will send a company to us. You know, company ABC uh, just started operations in Singapore. They're looking for a full stack developer. Do you have anyone? All right. So in addition to the to the search firms, they will come to us. So that's how we do. That's how we help them on the talent side. The community side is is equally important. In in addition to just holding these events and and trying to uh, bring people onto our talent database. Um, we also are trying to build, um, you know, we're not building community for building community's sake. I mean, this community must be, uh, must find, the, the members of the community must find benefit in being mm -hmm. in the community. So, you know, we, we, we are building not just horizontal community across different verticals, but we are increasing, we're going to start looking at a few verticals that we're going to focus on so that uh, everyone can derive some value from it. A startup who needs a prototype made can now find someone in the community who's able to make that prototype, for instance. Mm. Right? Uh, it's a community that, that uh, we hope will include the entrepreneurs, the inventors, the scientists, but also the investors the regulators, uh, the vendors, and the manufacturers. Yeah, and then finally, to you know, all of this is got, uh, converges onto our investment activity. Uh, you know, our, one of our directors, Jeremy Kranz, uh, who sits on our board, used to say, you know, people that are not going to come to your events for the coffee and donuts, right? There's got to be something that that brings it all together, and and we believe that that's investment. So we in we invest in companies, uh, we invest in deep tech companies, and we invest in not just deep tech companies, but we invest in deep tech companies at the earliest stages of formation. Wow. So we have a company called Horizon, uh, for instance, uh, that was uh, in, in the very, very almost bleeding edge space of quantum technology. Uh, and the professor, uh, Professor Fitzgerald was from SUTD and was part of the Center for Quantum Technologies. And uh, we, we helped him to spin off and, and, and build a company. That, that would be an example. Yeah, so we're operating really at the earlier stages of company formation. Uh, to date, we have about 80 portfolio companies. We've invested about $50 million. Uh, we don't need to invest a, a ton, actually, because at this very, very early stage, investing too much uh, is, is, is counterproductive on, on many levels, right? I mean, That's the founders right. don't want to be overly diluted. Um, yeah, so our, our role is to get them started and then to bring in venture capital in the subsequent but rounds. Why, 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 why would the Singapore government, you think, you know, you know, we have this whole thing about smart nation and then moving towards, you know, using digital as one of the frontier um, of organizing the business. Why is innovation so important? You know, it, it will be interesting to hear more like, you know, uh, the endeavor of setting up SG Innovate obviously is to accelerate Almost like, it's almost yeah. like you become an arm to incubate more companies almost in an interesting level, right? Not, not, not just letting them just become sandboxes yeah. and incubating themselves. You seem to be a catalyst to help them. Is that, is that the mandate in some ways? Yes, it is. But, you know, your first question is a good one because sometimes we talk, you know, innovation has become such a buzzword. Yeah. We forget 
its original, you know, the original intent behind the interest in innovation. So, you know, if we just look at Elon Musk's SpaceX, uh, Tesla, uh, Hyperloop, um, these are new areas, new jobs where none previously existed. That's right. right. And, and that is really the reason. I mean, you know, at, most industries will plateau, will hit saturation point. So the drive for innovation is, is really a drive, not, not just to create value, but also to create uh, meaningful uh, employment. And I think in the deep tech space, what we like about the deep tech space, obviously, is uh, uh, it's not just a job, but it's actually a really quite compelling and engaging job. It's intellectually stimulating. Right. And, uh, and, you know, the data shows that these jobs tend to pay uh, significantly better. Mm. Maybe not if you're in the startup in the early stages, uh, but certainly if you can see it through, um, it becomes very interesting. Right. So, I mean, I, right. I don't need to name any names, whether it's Grab or Caro or, uh, you know, Nanofilm, our latest, uh, you know, E-Tech Unicorn. Um, you look at companies like Moderna, SpaceX. I mean, these are, these are I mean, new opportunities, high value jobs. So from a macroeconomic perspective, that is, that is really the, the interest. Mm. Um, but just to continue, the, we, we are not going to, uh, it is not the role of, of government, so to speak, to invest solely by itself. Uh, yep. You know, we, we want to be involved uh, if we feel that there's a market gap. You know, if, if there are areas in which the private sector has not uh, taken the mantle, then that's where we will try to, uh, that's, that's where we want to help. Um, but, um, you know, we, we've been reasonably successful, I think from the 50 million in, that we've invested, the companies have gone on to raise uh, more than 700 million in follow-on investments. So that's, that's really positive. And, um, and as of today, we are probably the only one that's, uh, the only entity that's focused on the deep, on deep tech career and skills development. Uh, I, and, and our community today stands at about 68,000. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, the next slide. Shall we move on to the next slide? Yeah, so this kind of, you know, recaps what I just said. We are looking only at deep tech, at emerging technologies, um, things that probably will see the light of day in about a decade, I think, reasonably speaking, on, on average, right? Hopefully, if digital is faster. Hmm. Uh, and these are technologies that we hope will create entirely new markets, new uh, new vistas of, of, of growth. And are there certain verticals and sectors that you, you are already seeing like um, where, where innovation and, and deep tech um, uh, play, it's, it's becoming more prominent, especially in the companies you're, you're supporting or the, or the startup that you're growing? Is there certain verticals, whether it's in health, biotech, um, EVs, autonomous mobility today, are there any areas that you're seeing huge interest at the moment? Yeah, and that brings us to our next slide. Perfect. So you'll see that we have about seven boxes there. The bottom, in, at, the bottom, at the bottom, you see four white boxes. These were the areas that we were previously involved in. So like I said before, you know, our role is time sensitive, context sensitive. Uh, in the early days of SG Innovate, which, which was founded in 2017, by the way. So we haven't been around that long. But uh, in, in, in phase one, our focus was on digital deep tech. So we were the early investors in uh, AI, ML companies, uh, cybersecurity, analytics, um, early investors in uh, transportation, uh, AV, EV technologies, or supporting technologies. And then towards the tail end, we started doing digital health. And that's like a segue to our new focus areas uh, which you see in green, and um, that that would be in in biomedical. So we started with digital health. Now we're moving into drugs, diagnostics, and um, devices. Yeah, uh, advanced manufacturing. 
as well as um, agri and food tech. Uh, these are areas that actually it's not, not because we are super clever and we came up with them, but these are the areas that, um, you know, the, these are strategic areas. So the funding that we receive uh, with which we make the investments actually comes ultimately from, uh, um, this was part of the 300 million that uh, DPM Heng announced uh, last year. Yeah, so we got, we got some fraction of that uh, to invest in these areas. But these are areas that, are, that we see uh, important uh, for Singapore. And mm. it probably not getting the private sector attention that it deserves. That's yeah. right. And, and that's why we're going to go and help it. But I think it's, it's, it's the, the three areas in, in, you talk about, especially in agri-food and med tech, right? I think it's, it's so uh, relevant today, isn't it? Because of COVID in particular, right? Because yes. of all the lockdown that's going on and because of, of obviously the COVID, you know, the innovation of, you know, as you mentioned about all the vaccines has been, that's been innovated, right? I mean, it wouldn't have happened if there isn't investment like, you know, um, what SG Innovate does. And in many ways, even down to agri-food, right? With all the climate changes happening, um, it is an interesting area, but you know, one of our new clients, Olam, right? They are in, in agri uh, uh -huh. for the moment. So it's interesting to know that, you know, in agri tech in particular, companies uses, you know, a lot of AI to learn about weather changes so they can prevent and, and manage crops better. They improve the nutrition of crops so that food become better in terms of nutrition. So there's a lot of innovation that goes on into spaces of bio and med, as well as health and, and agri that people sometimes don't think about. They think about innovation. Yes. Okay. It's got to be everything else, like what we think about like mobility in AI in terms of like, you know, whether it is e-commerce related. But I think, yeah, you're right. The growth areas, um, especially with pandemic, has accelerated, I think, the attention of all these new um, areas and verticals. Yeah, I mean, agri-food uh, has many adjacencies with healthcare. So, uh, you know, we like it. Uh, it's also our spearhead into the general sustainability space. Yes. Yeah which, you know, for a long time, it was the domain of tree huggers and do-gooders, but um, the reality is, look, the, the, the data is very, very compelling. And if we don't take care of this earth, uh, you know, there's nothing to, to leave our kids. Uh, so, you know, food is, of course, uh, you know, we treat it as a spearhead because as you know, uh, um, you know, the methane um, uh, impact from being a carnivore uh, accounts for a very, very sizable component of, uh, uh, of carbon emissions. That's right. right. So it's not just about Singapore's goal of 30 by 30, which is important as well. Uh, it's also about, you know, doing our bit to reduce our dependence on cows, pigs, and, and, and sheep, yeah. Mm. Um, but it's interesting because this, this areas, um, Singapore, obviously, it's not a natural place to think about agri, right? Because, you know, we yes. don't have, we don't do that. But obviously, we seem to become a place where, you know, a lot of the startups and, and incubators found that it's, it's the right place to be positioned. Um, to do, you know, especially biotech, as you mentioned, like advanced manufacturing in particular, as well as agri food. Yeah. Is it, you mentioned just now due to like, um, not just um, about the technology, it's really just the talent, isn't it? Because um, innovation, it is not just about the tech, it's really about the people behind the tech and people, you know, who's able to think yeah. through in terms of the lens of research and development, isn't it? Yeah, so we, I mean, we, you know, we all have to play to our strengths. I mean, you're absolutely right. We are not agricultural by nature. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of sheep to conduct experiments on uh, or to try, you know, things on. Uh, so we have to do what we're good at. So, you know, things like, uh, you know, for instance, and, and this is really not bleeding edge anymore, but we know that if you manipulate light, mm. uh, you know, uh, certain wavelengths of light help plants grow better. Uh, things like that uh, we can do. Uh, cultured meats, probably, I mean, it's still extremely expensive, uh, but as we come up with new ways of, of accelerating cell growth and helping them to grow in, in a way that tastes like meat, I mean, these are things that we can do, right? These are not right. land intensive. Um, so, but, you know, the, the, 
what's encouraging, what's been really uplifting with uh, COVID, you know, one of the bright spots in this whole catastrophe is that you know, people actually have come together from all over the world to solve problems. I mean, you know, the, 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 the scientific intelligentsia uh, pulled together and that, that's the only reason we even have vaccines today. Uh, the scientific intelligence here today is, is, you know, virtually unified in, in the fight against uh, climate change. And, uh, you know, while we can do what we are good at, uh, it doesn't mean that we're doing it in isolation. Uh, mm. you know, if we, we collaborate. I mean, if you look at our research institutes, whether it's ASTAR, NUS, NTU, uh, the number of international collaborations they have is actually quite breathtaking. And in fact, it is, it is a very significant factor in the university rankings, the, uh, our ability to look outwards, our mm. ability to communicate, our ability to do things with international partners is a strength. So in agri-food shape, doesn't change. We need to work with people, the people who have the sheep, the people who have the land, who have the plants, uh, in order to, for our technologies to succeed. Yeah. And also looking at your partnership, like the model right, that you have in terms of like the corporate sponsors and all that, maybe the next slide will show that. I think yes. it's interesting to, to see how you, know, you operate in this interesting support ecosystem in many ways, right? That's an amazing you know, companies that you're working with right now. And then yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about your network in this instance? Yeah, you know, I was just talking about, I'll, I'll just start from the right box since, you know, I, I, I just talked about how important it is to collaborate today, yeah. And uh, it's also a nice sort of a prologue to our subsequent discussion on open innovation. Um, yeah. But um, part of what we do, or part of what my community team does is, is to expand these international networks, right? So that our companies, uh, when they need to, or they have to, uh, are able to uh, uh, connect with partners overseas. Obviously, again, we, we don't do this by ourselves. We work very closely with Enterprise Singapore. Um, in, you know, whether it's helping uh, foreign companies come to Singapore or Singapore companies venturing overseas, you know, we play a role. We work closely with ESG to, to facilitate both. Um, the other thing, of course, is the collaboration is also between big and small. Yeah? Um, you know, you've, you've shown some examples of the work that you've done. Uh, mm companies so for us we we are the middlemen also we try to connect our companies with the bigger companies very often in the early stages the, this connection is important because it provides reality testing right yes. you know sometimes when you invent something you think the world of it you think this is uh, god's gift to mankind and and it's useful to have a bit of reality testing right that's uh, right and this yeah you know how are we going to sell it? Do you have the channels to sell it? Do people actually want it? And this is something that's, you know, that the big companies are better at. Now, down the road, of course, we want to work with them because, uh, you know, first, in, in the first instance, it's reality testing, but subsequently, it's to ac really access uh, market channels. Um, so we, we, you know, we, 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 on a very frequent basis, we, uh, in fact, we have one, team within my investments team uh, whose sole role is to uh, curate problem statements from the companies, mm. right? And which, which, which serves as guidance for our startup companies. I don't say that lightly because today it's so easy to say, oh, problem statements, problem statements. But, you know, problem statements, uh, you know, also have good problem statements and bad problem statements. Totally, yeah. totally. And, uh, Right, so uh, it's also a question of specking the problem statement and, and curating the, those uh, problem statements. So we actually have someone. Totally, who that. You're Thank totally you. right because I think you know in, in our work, right? We we do the same thing. Right, problem solve for clients quite quite a fair bit. Thing what you mentioned like just now, using Grab as an example, right? Um, that innovation that Grab and became that super kind of like unicorn or decacorn as they call it today. Um, it's not just about an app getting people from A to B, right? I mean, what they are really solving in terms of problem is solving the frustration of being able to get, you know, um, transportation in the way that you can control and manage and you know what's happening, right? Because in the past, as you know, the frustration of just making a phone call and trying, trying to get a transportation with no visibility of um, when they're coming, 
where you're going to, are there availability? They're probably solve, they are solving the problem of, of much more than just, you know, being a, a cool app, right? So I think sometimes people overthink it, right? It is the problem statement became so important, as you said. Yeah. And then and then they, they identified a whole host of other problem statements that their platform can address, which is the really cool thing. Uh, whether it's Uber, Grab, Gojek, right? I mean, it's, it's all about moving objects, whether it's humans or food or gifts, plants. Uh, and then, and then the, the supporting, un the underlying uh, financial uh, commerce uh, substructure uh, to support yes. all of this. So it's incredible. And, and you know, again, this is what innovation is, is all about. Right. Yeah, yeah, and the entire, as you said, the entire micro, almost social enterprise that they built because of the entire network of the so-called uh, vendors or players into their entire ecosystem, they're able to look at them and then obviously supporting it. And I think, especially in, in developing region in Southeast Asia, I think the micro enterprise, right, in particular helping all of these small businesses will become such an integrated ecosystem through the pandemic is going to accelerate the entire thing. So using uh -huh. innovation like Grab that could help so many people is quite amazing because you're giving yeah. jobs. Um, you're using innovation and data to help people move things or as you say, move people, move food, move anything better. And then over time, there's an entire ecosystem through innovation that's uncovered that people don't realize it's, it's bigger than just a simple problem statement, right? And defining it right uh -huh. is, is the key. Uh -huh. yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, go ahead. No, yeah, the next slide I think was also quite interesting, right? When you share um, a little bit about um, how you actually look at, oh, there you go, the, the open innovation play, which I want to talk to you about. Maybe yeah. here, maybe let's have a quick chat with you, right? I mean, why? I mean, when we talk about innovation, a lot of companies tend to think of innovation um, as um, as a way that's like internal, almost like I have an innovation or R&D arm. But what's open in innovation? Because I saw one of your blogs recently, you talked a little bit about open innovation. And I know I'm um, just working with companies who have set up their internal innovation lab or trying to incubate certain innovation or trying to acquire startups and all that. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about open innovation? Yeah, it, it, it turns out Singapore is really quite the hub for open innovation. Uh, but this is a movement that began, I mean, it's not new. Um, uh, and, and again, if I can just call up the slides, uh, this has been going on for quite some time. I mean, you know, the really smart companies have been doing this forever, quite frankly. Um, and, and, and the reason is very simple. Uh, why depend on a few top brains when you can depend on hundreds or thousands of top brains across the world? Right? Mm. Why, why do you want to put all your baskets, um, all your eggs in one basket when there are really many baskets you can put your eggs in? Um, yep. And that, that, that really is the, uh, you know, the, the, the original premise. Um, now that was then, um, how should I put it, uh, aggravated. And in, in many ways it was, it was a, a, a pro, you know, this whole thing about not putting your eggs in one basket had a prophetic element to it, since I'm, pun intended, since I'm working with a profit group. Um, because it turned out R&D productivity in a lot of organizations actually, in some cases, uh, declined over time. Um, especially if you were in a big organization, uh, you know, things, people get comfortable, things ossify. So, um, on the one hand, it was the very simple logic, not putting your eggs in one basket. But on the other hand, for some companies, it was, there were signs that R&D productivity was declining and they yeah. had to find a new way to, uh, to address that. Um, and, that's, and that's what open innovation is all about. If I can just call up the slide, uh, Chris. Yep, the one after the, yeah. the divider slide, yeah. The second slide? Yeah. Yeah, this one, right? I mean, this kind of visually uh, captures it. Um, so, you know, we were just talking earlier about um, getting uh, problem statements from, from companies. You know, we are not alone. I think most VCs, any good investors today 
uh, would do the same thing. So if you can just turn to the next slide. And in a way, that is a form of open innovation, right? Mm. Um, because uh, one of the things that we do also is we don't just um, uh, get the problem statements. We also do these things called reverse pitches, where mm. instead of a startup company pitching to big companies uh, to be their customers or, or investors uh, for money, uh, we get the big companies to do a reverse pitch, to do a pitch for the startups to say, okay, I want to provide a solution for that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and um, um, sorry, this is a slide that uh, kind of, uh, I actually need the next slide, but let me come back to this. If we can just go to the next slide. So we have an open innovation forum that that uh, we have set up together with uh, EDB uh, Enterprise Singapore, as well as IMDA, the Infocom Media Development Authority. Uh, and that's what we've been doing. I mean, we, we, you know, we do pitches, we do reverse pitches um, uh, with, with this group of uh, corporate partners so far, Valore, Schneider, Infineon, Singhealth, Unilever, Novartis, SCG, uh, that's Science Cement. Yeah, so uh, that's that's uh, that's and, and on the other side on this on the small companies today we have involved companies like Chronicare, Resync, Tiger, Lucense. So that's what we do on a on a fairly regular basis. Uh, but if you look across the ecosystem, if you look at A Star, uh, NUS, NTU, uh, increasingly uh, where it's relevant, SMU, Singapore Management University, you see a huge number of Corporate collaborations. I mean, NUS has a big one with Keppel. Yep. Uh, you know, I spent a good number of years at NTU, so I'm more familiar with NTU. I mean, we have corporate, we have uh, what we call corporate labs with companies like uh, NCS, uh, with Hewlett Packard, right? Singtel, uh, ST, um, and these are open innovation labs in which our scientists work together with their scientists uh, in a common space. Yeah. Interesting. So, so, I mean, they, so, the, so the academia are, are really opening up the collaboration, right, with, with the companies, you know, so using not just yes. internal innovation, but go to all this um, kind of like academia and there's, there's this collaborative uh, way of doing innovation. That's what you're saying. Yeah, and actually it's a little known fact. This has been going on for a while. Uh, it's also supported by, by EDB, for instance, because what EDB would do is, is to provide uh, uh, PhD scholarships. So, if, if let's say you're your big company like GlaxoSmithKline and you want, you know, PhD geologists or chemists, uh, then as part of the package uh, um, of, of setting up shop here, EDB provides some of this uh, manpower support, right? So, to help the companies acquire uh, or develop the talent that they want. So, you know, it's a, it really will, it, you know, the different agencies work hand in hand to, to try to, uh, you know, bring this value out of the companies that are operating here. Interesting. Wow. It's, it's, I think it's, 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 I don't think it's something that a lot of startups realize that they could do, right? And so sometimes a lot of startups will just go to a lot of the conferences and try to pitch to the ventures and, and VCs. Yeah. What you're doing here, actually it's, it's already an avenue and a place to, to help a lot of startups get the right support because you, as you say, you have the community and you have the network to be able to link the corporate uh, sponsors and partners to be able to link them up together. So I think this amazing ecosystem that you have is pretty robust, right? Yes. I mean, today, I think, you know, if you're a startup, you're very privileged because there's so much support. As long as you're prepared to be helped, there is help, right? Yes. Now, I know most, for most startup founders, the only help they want is money. Like, but all I can say is from our experience, money ain't everything. Like, it's yeah? true. Uh, it, 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 it behooves all good founders to understand, uh, you know, what their limitations are and how to address those limitations, right? Uh, and it's not just about money. So the, the, as an ecosystem, the support we, we provide today uh, should help you jump through a, quite a few hoops. Uh, on, on I quite like. I mean, I quite like the entire like the what I'm seeing here from SG Innovate, EDB, you know, uh, uh, IMDA, and and Enterprise Singapore because 
each of these government entities support um, the startup in a different way, right? As you say, EDB helping them to whether companies coming from foreign to here or going expanding overseas, the digital way of how Infocom is able to help and then Enterprise Singapore linking up like yourself, linking up with a lot of the network and, and talent in your space and then Enterprise Singapore will get, for example, consultants like ourselves and I'm going in to help company uh, yeah. manage their transformation a little bit better or their branding better. So there's a very uh -huh. nice, almost like a complete holistic way of looking at innovation almost across the business spectrum, right? Not just in terms of the technology and the and the space that you're playing, but you, you have partners um, across the Singapore verticals or the government verticals to be able to help them uh, manage the entire growth in, 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 a, in a much more managed manner rather than just in a vacuum. So I thought that's, yeah. that's this is an amazing ecosystem. I mean, the, you know, it, the, this is something that we, you're right. I mean, we, ought, we really should propagate across the whole ecosystem. Yeah, um, we are lucky because, you know, the starting point, the deep tech community is, is still a manageable community, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we're not looking at a num you know, numbers of companies in the tens of thousands, right? So this is, uh, so this is something we can do and that's, you know, for a, for, for a new space, uh, it's perfect. But, you know, I think, but you're right. I think we really should, for, for the broader economy, uh, this kind of approach, uh, forget deep tech for a moment, any SME uh, would benefit from, from uh, something like that. That's true. That's true. That's true. And maybe that's something Papa can do, you know, quite, quite honestly. You know, just bringing people together uh, so that, you know, with the problem statements and the willingness to solve those problems, I think if we can match that... Mm. Um, problem and solution supply, demand and supply uh, that, that, you know, across the rest of the spectrum, uh, economic spectrum, that would be really uh, interesting. So you're saying that you, you mentioned earlier that you hold about three forums a week in some sense um, doing this um, with, with the startup at this point in time? No, no, we, yeah, when, we, when I said we, were, we run events, you know, three to four events a week, uh, they're not always, they're not all uh, pitches or reverse pitches. Very often we do uh, things to educate so, and, and raise awareness. So for instance, you'll see that a good chunk of our uh, event calendar is devoted to sustainability themes. That's right. Because, right. Uh, uh, you know, and, and we're not just doing this because uh, Prime Minister has made this a national challenge. Uh, we, you know, we, I think as, as good scientists, we, we see the writing on the wall and we want to do our bit to, right. to help it. Yeah, so, uh, so a lot of it is, is raising awareness. Uh, a lot of it is network building because, you know, when we bring four to five people together on a webinar, these guys get to meet, they've yep. had a chat, and yep. very often after the webinar, they continue, the, they continue uh, you know, they've been linked up. They, yep. Some of them actually continue doing things, and some, sometimes it leads to actual business. Yeah. But I mean, so this, it's, but, but this, yeah, this is a good segue for us to ask maybe, you know, um, in the time that we have left for the webinar, you know, we have some uh, interesting different audiences. Who, any questions, you know, you want to ask um, Dr. Lim or myself um, with regards to, you know, how SG Innovate might be able to help your company or, or yourself or with regards to any question with regards to um, how open innovation is a way to help businesses. Any questions from, from people who are attending the webinar? Feel free to drop in into the chat if you want to. Any questions? Don't be shy. Yeah. Okay, with regards to community part, is there a focus to extend the reach towards top tech colleges and university to catch talent? So I guess this is a, a this is a question from this uh, Vivis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so we, like I said, we're not a search firm, right? So we don't, we're not actively searching, right? All we do is we put our community, uh, uh, we try to give our community value, right? Uh, and of, and, and, and do, in so doing, 
we also bring some value to the companies that are searching for talent. But you, so, so the short answer is we don't actively go out and search. Usually, these are when, when we, uh, uh, for these employment opportunities, they come from people joining our community, attending our events, and then opting in and saying you're interested. And then if we find the right match, we'll call you up and say, hey, so and so is looking for someone with your skills. Uh, do you want to talk to them? Interesting. So you almost have your own internal AI database to be able to match them up, right? Then there's another Yeah, we actually custom built our database. Uh, it's nice. not AI enabled yet because it's still in evolution. But uh, yep. yes, it, it's, it's homegrown, home yeah. designed. So another question is like, do you, you know, collaborate with accelerators and incubators? Yes. So for those of you who are not familiar with us, we actually invested in a, an accelerator called Entrepreneur First. This is uh, Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur First uh, is from the UK, from London. Uh, and it's a very interesting premise. Unlike other accelerators who admit you uh, on the basis of a business idea, mm. uh, PF doesn't care about the business idea in the first instance. They care about you as a person and whether you have the talent to succeed, right? And then, so they admit you, and then in a, in in, I suppose uh, there's no better way of saying it. In a in a process of speed dating, uh, people individuals start to form teams, and then the teams come up with ideas. Got and it. What EF does is it takes you through a process so that at the end of the process, if you make it through that process, uh, EF invests uh, or brings investors uh, uh, for you. So mm -hmm. the short answer is yes, we don't just work with EF, obviously. We work with a whole variety of uh, incubators, accelerators, and, uh, and of course, VCs. So there's another question from Vaj, I guess, right? How do you create a marketing sales mindset, you know, amongst deep tech so that a venture is successful? <laughs> Good question. That's a holy grail, right? Um, you know, we do the best we can. I mean, number one, where we can, if we feel that there is an appropriate mentor, uh, we will connect them with a mentor. I think, and personally, I think that's really the best, best way to do it. Uh, and of course, because we have such a big uh, database, the database is not just entrepreneurs. I mean, the database includes seasoned uh, uh, executives. Uh, many of them come forward and say, look, you know, I have time on my hands. I want to give back. You know, I want to mentor people. So I've signed up, by the way. I, I've, I've signed up, by the way. So I'm going to offer myself as a mentor as part of There we go. There we go. So we, today, right? Yeah. So we can get Jacqueline. If, if a company is, is at the stage where they are, they're ready to sell things, mm -hmm. then again, we go through our database and, and then we'll say, hey, look, there's this Jacqueline there with perfect credentials for company X. And then, and then we would give Jacqueline a call and say, look, you know, are you interested? Do you have some time to spare? Um, and that's, that's how we do it. We, we don't do this like a search firm does it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've spoken in a lot of like, I've spoken in a lot of fintech conferences and, you know, all of these startup conferences, right? And one of the things I found interestingly is that a lot of the startup and ventures company, they start to sell and think about their tech as a way to push their so-called their selling, right? And they, they forget yeah. about the entire, when you said, you know, Vaj question is right in terms of the whole sales mindset, right? Because sometimes they're trying to push the innovation. They're trying to create the next big thing. And I always say it about, you know, innovation doesn't mean you need to become the next big thing, right? You can't become a Tesla overnight or a SpaceX as, as Jay mentioned earlier. Because I think innovation is about solving a problem and making it better in an incremental manner, but yet you're able to solve a bigger problem. And Grab is a good example, right? The frustration of just being able to call a taxi and then waiting for a phone call. And then there's, you know, Uber transformed that totally. And then how Grab has moved it to the next level. So if you think about the entire problem statement, as Jay mentioned earlier, it is not about what you as a, uh, a startup or venture could actually push towards um, trying to disrupt and make the next big thing and earn big bucks, right? But if you're able to unlock, I think the magic of solving a big problem, 
through just an incre even incremental, right? Nine out of 10 innovation fails, we know, and then one, you know, could succeed, right? But it's really that mindset to be able to solve a problem and not to make money. That's always my first advice, right? If you're trying to make money out of the startup, then I say you have failed, right? But if your innovation mindset is to be able to innovate something and solve a problem, there you unlock the magic and the money will come. Let me just come back to Raj Ravel, uh, your question. So in addition, uh, there's, I, I think everything that Jacqueline has just said is, is absolutely true. Uh, but, but we also have very concrete examples of some things that we do uh, for the founders. So across, so nationwide, uh, the National Research Foundation has backed uh, entrepreneurial trading. Uh, you know, to the extent that that's possible. And, you know, at the end of the day, an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur. We can't teach you to be, to have that drive and that spirit, but we can prep you, right? We can prep you. Uh, so uh, one of the, today at the universities, you know, if you get a research grant uh, that's meant to commercialize a technology, uh, you are required to attend some uh, training. So mm -hmm. the Singapore MIT Alliance, for instance, has its own boot camp. Uh, the local universities run a, pro uh, a program called Lean Launchpad. The Lean Launchpad program is basically a program of business model validation. So these guys, these professors and scientists, they want to, they think their technology can become a product. They need to go through LLP. In LLP, you actually have to call customers. You actually have to make cold calls. You actually have to do a proper study uh, on, on, you know, whether that business idea is valid before you jump into the abyss, yeah? So th we, we, that's at, at, at level one training. And then at SG Innovate, we, we provide additional training. Um, maybe it's not directed specifically at marketing and sales, but we do a lot of uh, founder development because in a startup company, you need to be familiar. You know, a lot of startup founders, for instance, have never managed people. They don't understand you know, you say, I, I want to hire an engineer, but they don't understand, hey, to hire someone, you first have to have some sense of a job description. You, you need That's to true. write it down. Because right. if you don't write it down, then what are you, what are you posting on the, on the site? Or what's your instruction to your, to your headhunter, right? And then after that, we need to, you need to have a sense. What are compensation and benefits that are appropriate for a company of your stage and size? So there are many things that uh, you know, uh, startup founders need to learn. These are things independent of entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, things like cap structure. What is a good cap structure? You know, how many investors do you take before you become accidentally a public company? You know, mm -hmm. These are things that need to teach you. Right? And then, of course, let's not forget basic accounting. <laughs> a lot of founders don't even know the, the differences <laughs> between the, the financial statements. Uh, PNL in the balance sheet, you know. So these are the things that we 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 can all do. They're not directed specifically at marketing. Uh, and for us uh, in the in the early stage deep tech space, that is often because our companies very often at the stage at which we go in are really not ready for marketing. But this is a very good question because we recognize this as as a, as as a a weakness. Uh, yep. in the local startups, the inability to sell like yep. Elon Musk, you know? And, and again, this is where I think, uh, you know, Jack, this is something that is an area in which, you know, we could work with. Yep. Uh, often, I mean, if this is one of your, uh, you, you know, your skill sets, that this yep. is something we can work together. I mean, we have done something similar to what you mentioned about Caro and all that. We, we work with, you know, like things like Polestar in, in Europe. And then we work with a lot of the new startups um, to think about new way to position the brand and the proposition, right? But as you mentioned, mm -hmm. it's not about just that idea, but the holistic way that I think SG Innovate is able to train the entrepreneurs to become more financially savvy is important, right? Because it is able yeah. to scale your innovation, that's important, right? It is not about innovation, but how do you scale it? How do you actually manage the, in the transformation? Maybe, you know, in, in the interest of time, one, one, one last question um, would be like, has COVID, you know, uh, changed any of the things that SG Innovate is doing, right? In, in the way you're, you're, you're working with your startups and your partners, has it, has it changed the way, I mean, we talk a lot about reimagining this new normal, 
in the way you know we work, the way we live, and the way we actually you know interact with each other. Has 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 COVID changed any of the things that you do? You know the it, it, the short answer to your question is no. And uh, what's interesting is actually COVID nineteen has validated our existence mm. <laughs> because yes. uh, if anything, we, we see that the, the solutions to the problems of mankind. Uh, are deep tech solutions, unfortunately. Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, there are no simple answers anymore, right? Whether it's climate change, uh, COVID-19, or the next disease X, uh, these are things that require, uh, you know, I, I always say this as a jing jingoistically, you know, uh, deep thought, deep science, deep tech. No easy answers. That's, that's great. That's and great. deep collaborations. Let me not forget deep collaborations. What COVID-19 totally. shows is deep collaborations. Yeah. Totally. I think, I think you brought up a really good uh, point for us to end the session because in our line of work, when we work across companies who have had problem having initially just an innovation as a business unit and then that unit trying to innovate, it's never worked right. Some of the most successful company we work with allows innovation to be a cross-functional thing, right? As you can see, a lot of companies these days, they talk about new ways of working and collaboration even within the organization, whereby we, we kind of remodel and help companies think about, okay, in, no longer is a silo innovation and expect the innovation unit to just innovate. It is about collaboration across the business unit. And sometimes it is really about bringing together the finance people, the talents people, you know, the sales people, and then think about that innovation and the problem solving in a holistic manner, right? Because it is number one is, as you said, how much investment do you need to, 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 to kind of like um, bring this innovation to life, right? So there's a financial, there's a money factor. And then who are the talent involved within organization? Do you have talents internally to do this or do you need to bring outside help in or hire, right? You know, what, what, what would that look like? And then obviously, you know, how do you then try to sell or, or scale this innovation um, beyond what you are doing and do it, does it transform the organization? And I saw a lot of change in, in companies, right? So companies like City Banks, for example, has, has collaborated with um, incubators and startup to try to scale some of their, their innovation. And they found that sometimes it doesn't work. So they spin off their internal unit and let them run on their own, right? Almost like a startup so that they can scale faster rather than holding their entire uh, kind of like big, bureaucracy system that hold them back. So there's a lot of interesting models that we see out there. What I'm particularly, uh, I thought in, it's interesting today that, that Singapore has this you know, innovation arm literally, right? To think about helping company to scale and think about and accelerate their innovation. So I thought this is, this is to me is an eye opener because the entire smart nation in Singapore talk a lot about um, there's true value right, in companies that's actually helping us to do that. So uh, thankful, thankful for, for this session of the sharing as well, Jay. My, my pleasure, Jack. Yeah. So thank you everyone for, for attending the session. I know we, we are up at the hour. Um, obviously, there are going to be continuation in terms of discussion and happy to just reach out to myself and Dr. Lim. And then we're happy to come back to you with any support. And yeah, join SG Innovate subscribe to Profit in terms of our, you know, we have interesting um, uh, insights and white paper that we share. And we just published several innovation white paper as well um, in the way of how do you think about innovation. Yeah, so go to our site and download that as well. Thanks, Jay. We'll speak soon oh, again. Pleasure to be here. So good to see you again, Jack. And yeah. thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you. Goodbye. Ciao.